So Frank Magnitz, a leader in Germany's AFD right-wing party, has been beaten almost within an inch of his life. Uh, the pictures are horrific. I'll link it, but I warn you to click on it. They're absolutely horrific pictures. Uh, apparently he was beaten by three people leaving a building and someone intervened or they most likely would have killed him. He's still in very bad shape from what I'm understanding. Uh, this seems to be a trend growing of political violence in general and particularly directed against right-wing people, which I think needs to be addressed. So you look at in the United States, you had Rand Paul that was attacked by a neighbor and had ribs broken. Thankfully, it wasn't more serious. You had Steve Scalise that was shot in a ball field. In Brazil, you had Bolsonaro, who's right-wing, who was attacked before the election and almost killed and uh there's other examples um, even in mexico you see i don't think it's politically related but you see a lot of politicians that are being killed tons of them and it's disturbing i think that situation is unique in that it has more to do with people on the left or the right that are trying to fight d drug cartels that are just being taken out by these cartels which you know you'd have to have some nerve to run for office in mexico if you legitimately wanted to try to clean up your country because i mean they're they're getting attacked at a, a really frightening pace but this type of political violence is scary because it could be cyclical it could be reciprocated against uh, the potential political rivals of the people that are being targeted and it could lead to uh you know a very bad situations so I first want to say in this situation, we have no idea who the attackers are at this point. And please, if you happen to be someone who would be in Germany watching this, though I doubt that's the case, um, don't jump to the gun. We, it could have been a robbery gone wrong, for all we know. That uh, so, And even if it wasn't, even if it was politically motivated, that doesn't give any reason or legitimacy to trying to reciprocate in any way, shape, or form. That also doesn't mean that everyone that was against this person uh, or against the AFD is responsible for this type of action. However, having said that, uh, what the AFD is, they're a party that it seems as if they're like an anti-immigration party that rises in Germany. Basically, like it looks a lot like the Re Republican Party of maybe the 1990s, from what I'm reading. Their policies, the only thing I saw that like really stuck out to me, like, eh, is I think they're against gay marriage before civil unions, uh, which isn't a huge deal, but that's something I would disagree with. Um, other than that, they just seem to be like kind of a nationalistic party that's like, look, we think this migration's out of control. It needs to be dealt with. Though, of course, they're smeared as far right, uh, but there's no evidence given of what makes them far right. It just seems to be if you're against the migration, then you're far right for whatever reason. Um, they've given, you can find videos on YouTube of when they've had rallies where mass amounts of protesters, including Antifa, show up to try to block those rallies. Now, the, one of the things that I think is interesting in this story is because they've been smeared as far right and even by Antifa as Nazis, and then this person gets attacked. Again, I'm not saying Antifa did this, but this brings back the question of, is it okay to punch a Nazi? Once you engage in that sort of rhetoric, you're signaling to a bunch of impressionable people that all it takes is for you to declare someone a Nazi, and then it's okay to use violence against them. So the media had this question, is it okay to punch a Nazi? Some places like The Guardian said, mm, perhaps, uh, and a lot of mainstream media pundit had people on or pundits that were like, yeah, yeah, sometimes it's acceptable because Hitler was so bad, so it's okay to punch a Nazi. And I've been warning for a couple of years since this argument was going on. It's like, no, it's not okay because... One, you say that, yes, you justify it's okay to punch Nazis. And then second, you see all the time when people are be calling Nazis when they're not really Nazis. Anyone who's got a right-wing opinion, some people call Nazis. Uh, people, And you see all sorts of people, like Ben Shapiro's been called a Nazi, who's also happens to have won, uh, been, won an award, I guess is the word for it, for being targeted by, all, or, uh, by like actual Nazis online more than any... Um, pundit in a particular year, I think it was like 2015. I mean, he wears a yarmulke. He's everything he says is supporting the state of Israel. I don't think he's a Nazi, but he was called that. Uh, tons of people were called Nazis. I've had people call me a Nazi because I support Trump, or all Trump supporters are Nazis, or Trump's a Nazi. And so, once you start engaging in that rhetoric, both of those two positions are very dangerous. One to say it's okay to use violence against Nazis, and second to call everyone a Nazi. Because think of it objectively, if you're a person who's like seriously believes that this politician or his supporters are the next Hitler, then you feel morally justified in committing all kinds of atrocities against them because it's for the greater good. I hope, and I know this is a weird, almost disgusting thing to say, but I hope we find out that this what that wasn't what happened here and that it was a robbery gone wrong or something. Because... <laughs> You know, it'll, it'll be sad to be proven right once again of like, oh, this, this is the incredible danger of saying 
all these people are Nazis and we should be allowed to use violence against them. But, uh, yeah, I, I hope the best for this man. Even if you disagree with him, you should hope that. No one should, you know. And I see it go the other way also. Like, in the United States, you'll see people that are wishing for the death of Supreme Court justices on both sides so that they could get a replacement. Like, that's terrible. We should not be cheering for violence to be enacted upon or for the death of people, politicians that we dislike. One, because it's immoral. Second, because it, as my video on civility showed, it just makes all of your other arguments seem less credible because you seem bloodthirsty or, and don't seem civil so people won't take you seriously. And third, because it's going to escalate. That type of mentality will escalate until we actually do see violence. So, yeah, this is a really tragic situation. Again, if you click the link, the, the pictures are horrific. Um, so I hope he pulls through and I hope that there's not a backlash or more political violence that occurs in Germany as a result of this. Um, I think the media should do, particularly those that have smeared people as in, in Germany that maybe have smeared people as far right or have suggested that it's okay to attack people that are Nazis should speak up and come out firmly and say like, look, it's not, a, if this was politically motivated, that's atrocious, which I don't read German, so hopefully some of those papers are doing that. So, all right. Uh, yeah, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. I'll be putting videos out daily at this point. So uh, have a good one.